I want to start this video off with a few key questions and answers, which may or may not be straightforward. They will be short though. Am I still using Windows 11? Yes. Is Windows 11 a good operating system? It's not broken. Is it safe to upgrade if you haven't already? Yes, but why would you? This is going to be sort of a segue to the meat and bones of this video. I say why would you because there's not a whole lot of stuff I can think of that I'm able to do in Windows 11 that I couldn't do in Windows 10, but there is a whole bunch of like little quality of life or simple things that I could do in 10, but I can't in 11. Now the overarching theme of this video, which is probably going to be titled something like things that you cannot do in Windows 11, is going to be change for the sake of change. Let me explain what I mean by that. Naturally, in UX design, every change you make to a system should be in the service of the users and the tasks that they need to perform on a day-to-day -day basis. When you make a change that doesn't introduce anything new, doesn't improve on anything that had already existed in some shape or form, and sometimes even has the potential of creating a worse user experience, well, that's what we call change for the sake of change. Microsoft has made a plethora of changes of this sort in Windows 11, and the result is an OS in which you just cannot do a lot of simple things that you could have done before. And I feel like the prime example of what I'm talking about here can be seen in the case of the drag and drop system in regards to the taskbar. So first of all, you can no longer add shortcuts to the taskbar by simply dragging and dropping them there. And you know what? That's not even what I'm mad about, okay? I don't know, maybe someone calculated that it takes less time to just right click on an icon and say pin to taskbar than it does to actually click on the icon, drag it down and just put it there. So they just got rid of an option that was there for as long as I can remember. This is probably one of those things that Microsoft would justify with that very famous buzzword streamlining. But I personally feel that this is just simplifying the user experience for no good reason. But like I said, I'm completely willing to get over this reduction and I have. But one thing that I still cannot get over is the fact that I can no longer drag and drop files to programs that are open on the taskbar. So pretty basic stuff, right? Especially if you're into something like video editing. You can be looking at a particular file in a folder and you want to quickly import it into the editing software. So you just click and hold, you drag it down there and, oh, that's right, you can't. I mean, this is just stupid. I remember way back in February, it was reported that these options were going to be brought back. Apparently at the time, they were actually already added to certain insider builds. And I'm sure they'll fix it eventually, but this is just one of the dumbest things I've had the displeasure of dealing with in Windows 11. And when I say that, I'm not trying to talk in a condescending way. I am fully aware that the majority of people that work on these operating systems are far smarter than me and can do things that I am just not capable of doing. What I mean by dumb is in a manner of consciously doing something that you know will be to the user's detriment or inconvenience. That's what I mean by dumb. And this is the perfect example of what I mean by change for the sake of change, where not only did the change not bring anything new or make improvements, it actually contributed to a worse user experience. But let's move on. Another thing about the taskbar, and spoiler alert, there's going to be more. In Windows 10, you could right click anywhere on the taskbar and then you'd get like a little context menu with a bunch of options. In Windows 11, that's no longer the case. When you right click, all you get is one option which takes you to the taskbar settings within the settings app. Now I talked a little bit about this in the review and I could almost see how this could fit into their narrative about streamlining where, you know, they don't want you to do anything by accident. Any changes you need to make, you make them in one place and that's the settings app. But I don't think a lot of these tech companies have a good grasp of the word streamlining. Streamlining in an operating system should not be the same thing as streamlining in something like a car assembly line where you make certain adjustments or get rid of redundancies for the sake of keeping costs down or I don't know, fitting into a certain timetable, etc. In a productivity-based operating system, redundancies are good, okay? Unless we're talking about something that uses up like a freakish amount of system resources or bandwidth. If that's not the case, then reducing the number of ways of getting things done is not streamlining, it's just simplifying. And for no good reason. Speaking of, I don't want to risk repeating myself too much in this video, I know I already have to some extent, I think that through these few examples, I managed to explain what I mean by things like change for the sake of change, streamlining, simplifying, etc. So for the remainder of this video, I'm going to do my best to just present the things that as of now, you can't do in Windows 11, but you could in 10. So like I said, there's going to be a lot of talk about the taskbar in this video, so I kind of just want to get it over with all at once. Three more things. Well, four actually. As of now, it's not possible to resize the taskbar. Now. Personally, in terms of aesthetics, 
I never was a big fan of those bulky taskbars that some people have, but then again, this is a productivity and gaming operating system. It's not a fashion-based operating system, and some people just may require their taskbar to be bulkier. I don't know, maybe they need to fit more icons on it. Well, since you can't make the taskbar bigger in order to fit more icons, maybe you can make the icon smaller. Well, guess what? You can't do that either. Also, the taskbar cannot be repositioned to the top, left, or right anymore, which means that the start menu won't be moving anywhere either. It can be centered like you see here, or you can move it back to the left, but in terms of moving it somewhere like the top of the screen, it can't be done. In previous versions of Windows, there were a few ways you could organize windows on the taskbar. You could have individual rectangles for each window that was open, you could group similar windows under one icon, or you could go with the first option, but have the system automatically switch to the second when the taskbar becomes full. In Windows 11, similar windows will always be grouped under one icon, and as of now, it appears that there is no way of changing that. Now, if you go into the Settings app and just type, for example, Group in the search bar, you'll see this little recommendation that reads, Customize how to group similar windows. And if you click on that, it'll take you to the taskbar settings where, as far as I can tell, no such option is actually available. I don't know, if I'm missing something, let me know in the comments. Now look, some of these things, or all of them for that matter, may be changed in the near future, but that doesn't change the fact that this has been the state of this particular user experience ever since launch, so that's almost a year now. And it's almost like they've created a protective bubble around the taskbar, like it's some sort of System32 type of thing that they don't want you messing around with because you might break something, right? Like, dude. It's not the system registry, just let us play around with the taskbar for God's sake. And speaking of, a number of these things can be remedied through the system registry. Now, those little tweaks are not going to be the subject of this video, but should there be a large enough interest in the comments, I'm totally open to making that video in the future. Moving on, there's a couple of things I wanna mention about the start menu, but since that's closely tied to the taskbar, which we have been talking about extensively by now, I wanna break things up with a couple of other things first. In Windows 11, folder icons are almost completely uniform. In Windows 10, if you had a large enough preview, you could see little thumbnails for the containing files, which kind of made it easier to tell folders apart at a glance. There actually is a slight difference between folders that have content and ones that don't, in Windows 11. If you make the preview large enough, you'll see that folders with content have like this little white file protruding out of them, while empty folders don't have that. Now, some people may see this as a downgrade in functionality and others may see it as an improvement in design. In practice, I feel like it does have the potential of affecting workflow or productivity. I know that's been the case for me, so I just thought it was worth bringing up. But now I wanna talk about the new start menu, which, if you ask me, has been put through a significant downgrade in comparison to its Windows 10 counterpart. If you compare the two purely from an aesthetical point of view, it's obvious that this one is much less robust Unfortunately, that's also the case in terms of functionality and customization. To give you a very simple example, the new start menu cannot be resized. So remember how you used to be able to grab an edge and then just drag it inward or outward to change the size? Well, you can't do that anymore. Furthermore, tiles are out the door as well. Now, some people love the tiles in Windows 10, some hated them, and depending on how you felt about them, you could either have one or more tile columns in the start menu, or you could just get rid of them altogether. But the thing about tiles was that they gave you the option of organizing apps and programs. You could create a tile group, for example, for games, your work stuff, I don't know, system utilities, etc. You could also change the size of the tiles depending on how prominent you wanted certain ones to be. In the new start menu, there are no tiles, which would be fine, I guess, if only they had given us some other way of grouping apps, which they haven't. And so the only way of quote unquote organizing apps in the new start menu is by pinning them to the pinned app section and then moving them around in order of importance. And that's pretty much it. Now, this video was meant to be pretty straightforward. I think that every point that I wanted to make, I already made throughout the video, so there's not gonna be any sort of grand conclusion or anything like that. Like I said at the beginning of the video, Windows 11 is far from broken. In fact, it's fine. But with so many reductions and simplifications to the user experience, I just see no reason why anyone should be in a hurry to upgrade, unless they wanna be on the cutting edge of what is available. But with that said, feel free to join in on the conversation in the comments below. Consider subscribing if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, stay strong.